right, this is Kim Snyder with The Voice Club. Thank you guys for joining us for uh, this special interview. We're going to have a great talk with uh, Command Sisters, uh, Canadian new artists, new country artists of the yep. year. I've had a chance to uh, work with, well, it's been about five years I've been working with the Command Sisters, so gotten yeah. to know them and their family a lot. And yeah. um, so as I ask a question, guys, we're going to have a discussion, both, both uh, Karen Command, mom, creator of the Command Sisters. Hi. Not, not independently, but with, you know, with Renee, <laughs> husband, father. And, and then we'll ask the girls some questions as well. So uh, first, uh, a little bit of a really quick background about how I met the Command Sisters. It's a long story. We, won't, we don't have time for it. But I was going through a, a medical thing that you can find out about on the website. At the time, I could not speak. And I was in a wheelchair, and um, my daughter was singing at this thing at Disneyland. I was there, and I heard these voices outside rehearsing. Oh, gosh, I'll have to put this video on the web someplace. And I, I wheeled out, and on my dry erase board, I said, I'm going to videotape you, okay? And the girls, <laughs> Charlotte, very sweet as they are. It was Stalker. awesome. Stalker nodded. <laughs> Crazy lady. I think she's in a chair. What can she do to us? And uh, as, as it turned out, I was seated next to their mom, Karen, as they were doing this, this talent thing. And we were talking. She was talking. I was writing really fast. In the conversation, I wrote, I'm a vocal instructor. So that's how it all started. I started working with the girls, and it's a long story, but crazy, crazy how you meet people. And my husband, who worked um, with a record company for about 10 years, you when you hear certain people, you go, mmm, that has the potential to go some places. So these girls have been working their butts off. Most people don't realize the amount of work that's involved in trying to pursue music as a young person and how it affects the entire family. So uh, we had a new, unique opportunity to get the commands to kind of share that. So girls, um, everybody can see you now. So I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell, tell everybody how old you are. Okay. Don't awesome. Go first. Well, I am Charlotte, and I just turned 19 um, last month, so that's pretty exciting. And <laughs> I'm Sarah, and I'm 15. 15, almost 16. Yeah. In a couple days. Couple days. You are. You're like yeah. two days from your birthday. Um, my my birthday's on Saturday, so getting up to the big 16. Pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exciting. So. Yeah. yeah put on a concert for yourself and not charge yourself to show up and play? That's, That's the a best idea. idea. <laughs> or I can just pay to have myself perform and then to make myself feel better than making money when I'm really not. Hmm. And you know what a bummer it is when you have to sing with someone else. You never get all the solos. So you could do a show where you make her sing back up the whole time and you could just be the star for the night. Exactly. Really or I make her sing, sing and then I enjoy myself the whole time instead of doing all the work and eat my, eat my cake. And listen to her sing. Yes. And I don't even pay her. She'll just sing because she's my sister. So. And because it's yeah, it's your birthday. You don't have to pay. You yeah. can eat it. You can sing. It's perfect. Yeah. All right. So. All right, girls, tell me now. I know you're all going to say, everybody says, oh, I was singing since I came out of the womb and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But tell me, both of you, your earliest memories when you really started thinking, I just, I got to sing and I want to learn to play an instrument and I want to I wanna learn how to do this. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of evolved a lot. So it started off as basically like almost like just something we like to do. And I, I don't want to say that we came out singing because I wasn't true. But <laughs> it, like, it almost became a thing where like when I was really, really young, we'd watch like my mom would put on musicals all the time. And I just love The Lion King so much <laughs> that I'd wear a Lion King costume and I'd just sing The Lion King everywhere. <laughs> like I would go into Superstore wear my Lion King costume and I yeah. would just sing the song. I know. <laughs> I was the unique kid. But I think, like, the, pa the passion of music was obviously something that we had at a young age. And our mom put us in, like, classical piano because she wanted us to do something. You know, homeschool or moms, so they got to put them in piano. Hey, right? you got to do piano. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of started like that. And then eventually it started to grow and grow more and more. And my sister always wrote poetry. And I think at a young age it was something we had an interest in, and we never really thought it would really evolve into what it did. So I guess... Here's one of the most fascinating things when it comes to personalities in a group. Um, as you can tell watching this video right now, you can already tell that Sarah, the younger one, has a more outgoing personality. And you can already tell that Charlotte, who's older and actually is the lead singer primarily of, of the <laughs> duo, just sits back and is like, 
She has a crazy what? side. She has a crazy side. I can talk, but usually she interrupts me. And she gets, <laughs> when she gets going, I can't talk. I couldn't, I couldn't no. cut into that at all. It just kept going. I couldn't cut into that at all. But on stage... Like for instance, uh, I've got some video. I'll tell you guys where it's at of them. Last time they stopped by at my place, and we're playing some acoustic stuff that's coming up on their next project. Is soon you, Charlotte? I forgot because I don't. I we train online. I forgot being yeah. in the room with them. How Charlotte yeah. is just like this the whole time until oh, yeah. until you get her singing, and then it's like, come on now. <laughs> and then I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so girls, tell me um, some of the um, biggest, most impressive, cool things you've gotten to do, and then we're going to start talking to your mom about how how this started with your family. Okay. Well, I would say um, some of the things we have done. Um, we got to meet William and Kate in 2011 when they came to Calgary, which was really cool. Like um, Europe's, we Europe's William and Kate. Yeah. Um, we performed at the um, Edmonton Folk Fest at the Sundance Film Festival three times, I think. Uh, Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. Um, what else? I can never remember. <laughs> Gosh, uh, I know got, there's more. Um, the John Lennon Songwriting Award, um, which through that we were able to play um, in front of Sheila E. at the She Rocks Awards. And also and um, I was able to be featured in Guitar World, which was really exciting out of um, NAM, which was, uh, the whole thing was at the NAM festival, which is a really cool um, guitar festival that is really hard usually to get into, so we were shocked that they let us Canadian Albertan people come in and play <laughs> on the main stage. We were shocked when they let the Canadians in. Yeah, and play on the main stage, which was really an amazing experience, so I know it's hard sometimes. There was a time at the, the, the MGM Grand, and you've done some stuff in LA, the MTV. Music awards. Oh, yeah, the MTV um, Movie Awards. It was kind of like a, a private event for different actors and people there. Yeah, that, that we was did two years ago Hills. in Beverly Hills, um, in Los Angeles, which we love it there. And I and, love when you guys. I can't remember what what awards thing it was at, but you're you're texting or something that you were. You were seated two rows in front of Taylor Swift in award oh, ceremony. Yeah, she but she accepted an award. She had to move past you guys to go up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was at the CCMAs, <laughs> which Canadian. is Canadian. It's like a, com a Canadian CMA award thingy. So. And I think our most important thing lately is like within like the last couple months, really this year, we've been recognized in our city for different awards and stuff, which has been really cool because when you get recognized from your own, you know, music peers where you're from, I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. So that's been really. Cool. We won a Yegi Award. It's called. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> it's for social media. Yeah, and then we won um, Edmonton Music Awards. We we won two awards there. And tell um, us about the uh, being the national spokespeople for the um, national bullying campaign, anti-bullying campaign. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was that cool. was cool. Well, we pars uh, we partnered with the RCMP last year. Um, which was really, really cool. We got to make Explain the RCMP, because I'm not Canadian and some of our people are not. Okay, okay. RCMP is like um, Royal Canadian Mountie Police. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we partnered with them, and we got to make this really cool, inspiring, anti-bullying kind of video. And so we, we've been going around to schools and talking to the kids about, you know, I think mainly just trying to be positive, and no matter what kind of position you're in, whether you're being bullied or watching it happen, or maybe you are the bully, you know, there's a way to make things right, and we've been seeing songs, and yeah, that's been really, really cool. Yeah, and then um, through that, like you said, you were talking about um, Kids Help Phone. Um, we wanted to, when people wanted to buy the song on iTunes, but we wanted to um, put the money towards, obviously, something to do with bullying, because it, it would have felt really wrong to take money for this song that's supposed to be helping people. So we really like this organization called Kids, Kids Help Phone, and we really believe in what they're doing. It's basically an organization where kids can call or text when they need like professional help or support, um, when they're going through bullying issues or any kind of issues. So um, through that, we were able to do some pretty cool things. We got to uh, announce at a truck uh, monster, a monster truck jam. Oh, cool. 
<laughs> so that was cool. And yeah, so it's been really great working with them. It's been lots of fun. Well, cool. Now we've talked about some of the really fun, cool, crazy, yay things that musicians love to do. And I'm sure you guys are glad for the opportunity for. I'm going to talk to your mom a little bit about what it's like to be the parent and getting you guys going and all of that. Then I want to come back to you guys, mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte and Sarah. We're going to talk a little bit deeper about some of the specific things that it takes not only to be a singer but a performer at that level and the amount of time and effort you put into it, mm -hmm. some of the high points of your journey so far, some of the low points, and some of those kind of things. And um, and then we'll wrap it all up with, with uh, giving everybody an idea of where they can go find some of those little sweet tidbits of uh, unplugged things that you did for us oh, last yeah. time you came through. Yeah. Cool. From the upcoming album, so so switch it on over to your mom and let's get let's get a mother's perspective of what Hi. it's like to Can have. Can you it. see me okay though? Because I I realize there's mm -hmm. light behind me. So is that okay? You just yeah, you just look like an angel. It's like a oh, halo. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. So it's appropriate. So okay. Karen, you and I met. Of course, we met at this event. I was writing, and you were talking back and forth, and I'll never forget. There was a a girl that was performing at this event, and and it's the typical kind of stuff we see a lot, and it's I'm not going to get into it. And, I, and you were like, oh, my gosh, she's so good. She's so much better than my girls. And I'm like, no, I wanted to slap you, but I didn't know you well enough yet. I don't know and, if I would have said better, but I just felt that she was a did. She was a little girl you, with the big voice. You did say better. Oh. oh, she's so much better than my girls, my girls. Yeah. So you you already, I mean, from the moment I met you, I knew this is not a stage mom, which is one of the things I loved about you because, as you know, now you've been around it by far long enough, there, yeah. are, there are different kinds of people as parents that get their kids involved in music and you either get into it to promote, to push your kid to a music career for whatever reason, whatever your motivation is. Right. Or many times there are kids that have talent that they're, that start going that way and the parents say, yes, that's clearly what they like to do. Let's help them. So tell me when you and your husband, Renee, knew that what the girls were doing musically was probably going to go a little bit further than just singing for friends and family. Uh... Probably, honestly, uh, not until they were sort of overheard in Nashville. So up to that point, I mean, there was a lot of years of singing um, and a lot of hard work already, but I wasn't getting excited about anything. Well, tell me about now, you, got, you guys were doing events and all sorts of things. So you mentioned it briefly in the beginning. You homeschooled the girls, and that a lot of times we see that because when you homeschool, you have a lot more ability to have time for musical training and, and travel as a family to go right. to different things. So yep. what, tell me why you started getting them involved in singing for people other than just family. Uh, they didn't even really sing for family. Honest to goodness, um, homeschooling just because Charlotte wanted to. We were going to do it for one year only. And that year I said, well, then there's a homeschool Christmas concert and you need to be part of that because that's part of the sort of school experience. And um, she was showing my grandma, who is now 100, which would have been, I guess, about uh, 88 or something at that time. Grandma, this is what I'm going to sing tonight. Um, and was singing for her at her old folks' home just very quietly at the table. No one was around. A lady was subbing in that day, filling up the sugar bowl, and she turned to me and she said, oh, they sing. And I said, no, they don't. <laughs> and she goes, well, I want to hire them. And I said, for what? I really didn't understand what she was getting at because I come from no, no music, no musical background at all. And um, she just said, for the women's conference, uh, contact this lady. She'll set you up with backtracks. I didn't know what backtracks were even at that point. Um, Charlotte was just starting her piano lessons and Sarah. And um, so from that little event, they sang a couple songs, probably The Lion King, right? Was it maybe The Lion <laughs> King? Yeah, I think so. Really, truly. And um, uh, someone hired them from there. And that first event, they were paid with a Walmart gift card and a stuffed animal and a cookie. So that was like really, this was really cool. And um, I think they probably had them back at the seniors' home a few times, just volunteer, and then maybe a few years later, was it Charlotte probably, a fellow phoned us and he said, I'd like to have the girls at an actual festival, but they have to learn instruments to accompany themselves because of course no one wants them on stage with backtracks. 
Uh, now that's different, maybe, but back then <laughs> it was to be authentic. And so um, I think Charlotte learned guitar first, and Renee, my husband, did just because he was um, he felt bad for her. I think Sarah wasn't ready to learn; she was still quite young. And and from there, I think when you learn the instruments, and then you can put the song in the key that you want. And Charlotte had tons of songs already, just poetry and little fun things that Sarah would act out for the neighbors. So Charlotte would write these little ditties and plays, and Sarah would act them out. But it simply was just for fun. Um, from there, and people started asking them to come out to different events and different festivals. And probably not long after that, I got a link oh, to apply for this Disneyland, um, where I met you, the Disney Disneyland conference. And Definitely not at that point was I thinking this is something to pursue. I was the mom that didn't think they needed voice because I would look like they, I thought they were amazing. I was the mom that didn't think they needed good guitars because that would be putting the cart before the horse. So probably just a couple years ago when um, we decided on a whim to go to Nashville and they were selected to perform at the Bluebird, which I didn't know what it was at the time. And we sent little demos in, didn't have good quality anything, and the lady phoned me and said, can they do an hour of original music? And I, I, I'm like, well, I don't know. And Charlotte's counting on her fingers. And she's like, write more. I can write more. And I think probably that's when we went, oh, OK. So and that sort of opened other doors for them. And then, and then we maybe thought, you know, OK, maybe we can consider you know, the good guitar <laughs> sort of thing. Yes, and, and unlike a, a lot of parents, um, the only way I can say it, and it's because you and I are now good friends, Karen. I could say that you were you were late to the party, of believing <laughs> of believers that knew I'm that your kids were going to go to somewhere. Party. <laughs> I don't want to hold my breath for anything, but I I love their talent and passion. Well, and I think a lot of times that's because we we have this perception of what making it is. Yes. And and when you've made it and uh, what other people think of when you've made it there's that whole perception issue and yes. and i find that you know i'm a parent myself and there's either the it's either the person who's cart way before the horse on purpose you know okay well they're 6 months old let's teach them four instruments and book them on the right. road or or they're the parents that say yeah i don't know i know people are paying you to do this but eh. and you kind of you guys were kind of in that camp yeah you know i don't know there's so much pressure with the music business or any business where you're a professional at such a young age it doesn't have to be the music business or acting it can be any other business that a young uh, adult or child is in, I can't imagine pressuring on another level uh, from a parent's point of view to the child because there's enough, there's enough going on between you know whatever we've got that I wouldn't want to, and I just I just sat back and it's not in my personality probably probably and watched other maybe there was those stage moms around once in a while and I just knew I didn't want to be like that. So. so tell me, uh, from your perspective as a parent, what um, are some of the really cool, unexpected things that have come out of this journey so far for you guys as parents? I was thinking about that when you um, talked about it earlier. Really, it's going to sound cliche, but it truthfully is meeting great people. It, there's it nuggets every once in a while, like yourself, you just go, wow. And it just makes it so special because we've been to a lot of events already where there's a lot of celebrity, and that was sort of probably mildly cool at first. And it isn't about that; it really isn't. It's about someone believing in them, someone being kind, going to a really neat place for the first time. Um, like we're going out to the East Coast, what we call our Maritimes next week and never being out there and apparently it's beautiful I, it's not about the the gig it is for the moment when you get this email you've been selected would you like to perform at and then quickly you go oh wow we're going to the Maritimes so the, for me that's the best part just sort of getting and you're getting off your couch you get to go out <laughs> and have fun right you know so there, there's the other side of that now since you kinda were a an unwilling participant along this journey has kind of moved on and you guys have kind of it's taken you 
instead of you pursuing it. Yeah. Uh, so tell tell us some of the um, the things that you experienced that were negative, people or events or experiences that that were surprising to you as you've gone through this process. Surprising to me that people mix up a mom that's a manager with a stage mom. They always assume the mom or dad are stage parents if they are looking after their best interests. So that's often a hurdle to get over with. Over. I'm also a female in this industry and I'm disabled. So it's sort of a triple whammy sometimes, but we just always say be nice and hopefully it works out for us and it weeds out the, the negative whatever. Um, the competitiveness is ridiculous. Uh, so you just have to, I think we've kind of gotten to a place for us, you have to believe in who you are and then that other thing isn't, that other stuff isn't quite so important or it doesn't hold too much um, over you sort of thing. I and you guys, have a, you guys have an extra challenge. I mean, first of all, you're Canadian. You have to overcome that. But, yeah. uh, but a, lot of the, a lot of opportunities you get will be in the States or other places. I know you're going overseas for a, a new opportunity you've got. But you brought up your disability too. And this is uh, something that a lot of people would think, well, I can't. I, I get opportunities, but I can't really take advantage of them because of this, or I can't do it because of that. Your right. whole family has to travel many times because you are in a wheelchair. So, right. it, and you have extra medical needs. So when you go out of the country, that's a major consideration. And then you also have to hold down a home and have an income. So mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about what it requires, not just with your disability, but as your family, financially and traveling and all of those things that you invest and why you do it. It does require so much um, from the family. I don't think you can do it the way we're doing it unless everybody's super committed, but it keeps you in a pod anyway, and we like that, so it works for us. We couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine there's been very few gigs I've had to miss because it's been inaccessible or whatever, um, and I, I don't like that. I, I mean, sure, sometimes I'm tired, I don't want to go, It's or it's a festival where it's just bumpy, grassy, doesn't work for the wheelchair sort of thing but I wouldn't miss it for the world. Like my husband says, in a few years, they're going to be on their own, and, you know, it'll be sort of up to us if we even, you know, can or want to, or we're even in the same city. Who knows? I don't know. So, um, not that we planned it. Yes, it's tons of work. Yes, it's a huge financial commitment because everybody knows you're all right here, and there's that 1% that are actually making too much money. So, there's sort mm -hmm. of no balance or in-between. And we just do what we can. In Canada, we're really fortunate. We have tons of grants, money's available. And that gets us by. It really does. I, we, you get a grant for recording. It often doesn't pay for the whole thing, but, you know, we supplement. We work really hard. I've given up things. It's not that I'm being a martyr, but I'm okay with that. I really am. Like, I don't need my new kitchen right now. I just, I'm okay. I really, it, it's fun. It really is. Well, parents are going to make sacrifices, whatever your kid's involved right. in. I mean, you're going to pay for soccer, you're going to pay for football, yep. whatever you pay for. But yeah, uh, you tell me when you guys decided, this is something that still amazes me about you guys, is that you've got your kids learning, what, 24 flipping instruments. Mm. How do you, A, have time, B, find money as a single income household to, to do all that, and why? We really just did the piano. You get funding through homeschooling that pays for those lessons, so that really helps. Um, they picked up the other instruments kind of on their own whim. Like Cheryl just said last year, I want to learn harp. Oh, okay. Um, let's go for it. We're not buying the $20,000 harp. We're renting, you know, the $5,000 harp. And um, you can learn a lot on the internet. We often didn't do lessons every week. And sometimes we'll stagger them so that one's doing the one year and one's doing the next, just just because of for that very reason. And um, we we are we aren't the parents that went, oh, let's sit down and talk about this. They're at this level, and this is what they need to be here, or they are going here. Let's propel that. We just kind of I almost feel like we were sort of a little bit behind and just trying to play catch up all the time. Oh, oh, okay, we need to be here. Oh, okay, we need a set list. Oh, we need an instrument. We need a new mando, whatever. And um, You mean mandolin by mando. Yeah, so we've made the kids pay for half of all their instruments. And now it's sort of everything, it would be completely on their own. 
So when they were young, we made them save for half. And yeah. And put their gig money towards it. I think that's a, a really great principle because it's not just play money when you finally start making money at a gig because there's a whole lot of money that goes into travel and you know, yes. clothes you got to have for stage and equipment and all of those things. And I think it's a great way to train young musicians to make them financially responsible for a portion yeah. of that. Because if they continue their career on their own, it doesn't matter if you're with a major label, you eventually change labels, whatever happens, you still have a financial obligation. It's okay. just like you do when you when you own a company. You still have to put into that. Now they're learning that skill. Yeah, like and, and you're so right with the label. Let's just quickly say to people out there, that's that's not free money. That's just a loan. So um, and, and and you know probably I'm not saying that the girls will be successful. They're doing very well. Um, but uh, I think probably inside of my husband and I, both of us, without actually verbalizing it, we know that this is their college money. This is you know what I mean. We're we're spending yes. it now, helping them kind of get going. And if they want to go to college later, that they. they have to Karen and I have this argument all the time we have for years about if the girls are successful, when the girls are successful, and I, I always say, hello, they already are. If you are doing something, A, okay. that makes you happy, B, you've got an opportunity you didn't have before, and C, something that anyone besides you thinks is cool, guess what, uh, you've arrived at success. Okay, that's, that's nice, that's cool. Yeah, we like we like those three things. We just wish dollar signs were attached a little bit. Doesn't have to be a bunch, <laughs> even just a little bit. But well, yeah, I mean, struggling actors. Well, we saw uh, some TV right. show the other night. My husband says, "Why is this guy in a TV show? He's done all these major movies." I said, "It's hard for everybody out there. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got to make money, however you can." And the fact that the girls make money when you go and you're able to recoup expense is huge. Yeah. Because I love what you said, and I just want to I want to wrap this up with you with this point yeah. about label contracts. This is one thing that people, a lot of people don't know that it, the, the record industry has shifted hugely over the last 10, 15 yeah. years and it used to be a contract was an investment in, in you for several albums. Now a contract is like you said, uh, whatever money they put up front, that is a loan. Everything has to go back to them and, and yeah. I've met several artists who end up working at FedEx to try to pay the album, the label back. You know, That's and they're, they're we're, we're finding the same thing. Doing things. Yeah, we're meeting unless you you can stay on top and keep writing and paying back. These poor people are in for even just in Canada, hundred thousand, that sort of thing. So it's yeah. So it's, if you think of the people yeah. that have that have just arrived, they and, and then they just disappear. That you might notice them dropping brown boxes at your front door trying to yes. pay for that ride. So <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, you have to have to look at what your definition of success is. Is success. Yeah not um, being financially in major debt for the rest of your life so you have to work mm -hmm. three jobs because you had this one opportunity. You know what I think too? Uh, success is people continually believing in them because there's this sort of ebb and flow with music and oh this is going to happen, oh no it's not happening or it isn't what we thought it was or it's not going where we want it to and you know you, you, there's always change and, and, and choices and so if you can just sort of Believe in yourself and have other people that just sort of keep coming along, believing in you and offering new opportunities and projects, if you will. Uh, that keeps us fed, absolutely. absolutely. And opportunities. I mean, you have, you have a career once you have people paying you. doesn't yeah. matter what you're doing. If every once in a while somebody will hire you to do something, that is mm -hmm. a career at some level if you're making money from it. So then, right. so once you're in a career, I mean, it's like an actor or any, any other creative art. It's the, a career is a lifelong thing and it ebbs and flows and opportunities go over here and over that's here. Right. Yeah. It's a low part. Yeah. It, that's what people think a career is this. Right. But oh, we've arrived. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure we thought that too until the past year and a half or so. Absolutely thought that was just you know, uh, like you, the YouTube kids, right? <laughs> that are, uh, they have zero views and then all of a sudden they have six million and I don't know. They're invited yeah, so to the I and they make some money and, and then they do some things and then, then they and disappear. They grow up and go away. <laughs> yeah, and we don't see them, but they're probably stuck with a whole bunch of debt from a lot of other things. I've seen it, you know, I've seen it, you've seen it a lot too. So it's one yeah. of those things that you have to be aware of as a parent when your kids yeah. are involved in music and other things is you've got to get, um, 
really wise counsel and, and be aware that there will be people that approach you when your kid is, is rising in popularity, people yeah. that approach you for things that really are just, they look like they have something to give you, but really they're just trying to Yeah, those sheep and, and, or the, the, the sheep, or the wolf in the sheep's clothes, right? That sort of thing, they're there. Absolutely. Okay, so on that, and then I'm going to go back to the girls. Tell me, Karen, because I know we've had lots of conversations about those kind of people too. So tell me what is the one tip you could give. Let's say we've got a parent who has young kid, a kid or kids that really love music and they're starting, yeah. people are saying, asking them to sing places and they're starting to get more attention and people are starting to say, oh, you're, your kid this, your kid that. What is the one piece of advice you'd give them about how you know who to listen to and who not to and how you protect yourself from getting taken advantage of. First of all, plug your kids' ears. Don't let them hear any of that. You can, you can share with them that there is possible opportunity, but don't let them hear that, oh, you're going to have your own airplane or you know, you'll be able to buy all the juicy or whatever. That, that's not health stuff. And then, as parents, don't get too excited until uh, things are signed. And that even doesn't mean anything, but be cautious. Uh, don't hold your breath. Really, we're still at that stage. Absolutely. We've got a long way to go. And, and, and still with opportunities, being very cautious. I don't know. Yes, you guys have had uh, opportunity to work with some great people here between management right now, which is why we have the opportunity to have this frank conversation because what yeah. a lot of people don't know is when you're in a management contract, uh, there's almost nothing you can say about anything ever because yeah. they, you know they can they have to be able to control because you are a product and it's it, it is business it is the way it's done that's right. why I wanted to take advantage of this short little window while you're yeah. switching over. Um, yeah. You guys did eventually have to talk to, not not an attorney, but a music attorney to be able mm -hmm. to look over paperwork and you guys are doing it internationally because you get offers from labels in the States right. and you have agreements, arguments between Canada and U.S. and all of that and management yeah. in two different countries. So um, have you found that you would have made better or worse decisions looking back, which is always 2020, had you sought that kind of professional guidance from a, like a music attorney level sooner versus when you did? When we were offered our first deal, we right away uh, phoned uh, a music lawyer in Canada. So we had good counsel. Um, I think just sometimes things aren't uh, always going to go in the direction that you hope. Sometimes people have uh, still uh, believe in you, uh, but you have um, a different idea or direction, and and so in that end, you have to be willing also, which is a a, a really uh, a difficult thing to be able to walk away sometimes. I think that would even be a, a good piece of advice. Don't think that that this is the end if you decide to make um, a, a change, not to take anything away from anybody or anything. It's just sometimes there's different direction. Uh, people have. A vision, I guess, maybe, and um, so we did. Yeah, we had good counsel. It, it, it's just it, there's the human factor as well. And you said a really, really good thing when you said about when we had our our first offer for a deal. A lot of people don't realize that you shouldn't just take the first offer that you get. You have to look at it is a business proposition. You have to say, well, what what do we need to survive, and what do what is our mm -hmm. goal as artists, and and then what is reasonable for them to invest and get out of this and how does that limit us from doing other things and and you have to decide if it's a worthwhile deal and if you pass on a deal I'd like you to speak from experience because a lot of people don't believe that if you pass on a deal there'll be another opportunity so tell me your experience with that I think you always think that you always will think that but if you're willing to work hard and there's talent or moderate talent, the, the opportunities will still continue forward if you, you're sort of open and available. Um, probably, I think it would be important in retrospect to totally, completely go into every opportunity as a, I hate to say it, but a business deal. Don't ever go in that room with your heart first, looking for friendship or whatever. Not to say that anything happened in any, I'm just saying that it's really important to think as a business person, and that's not my natural nor Renee's natural way. Uh, so that's been a really big learning curve for us, even for the girls. I think 
we're always sort of all about nice first and, and business second. And I think there has to be a balance. And you, ha you have to be able to, you have to believe in yourself enough and you have to be strong. You have to be insightful. You have to talk and rely on so many people that can help you through. It's not just the music lawyer. It's people like you. I mean, we've talked a lot uh, trying to sort through different things and direction. And, and, it, and it continues still with um, different opportunities that you sort of have in front of you and whatever, you know, what direction to take, where do you want to go. Um, and, and when things are quiet, uh, I think we're realizing that that just means it's a time for something else. And it's also possibly a time for, like they didn't have any gigs this month, which never happens to us, but it, it worked out that they weren't supposed to because they're busy writing for two different projects. They have no time other than to get their hair done before we leave kind of thing. Well, you got to have time to get your hair done. But yeah. when you said too, uh, people, don't, people, don't, people know the term music industry, but we do because we're creative people. We forget right. that it is. It is. It is. It is an industry. It is a business. And, right. and as Absolutely. a parent with creative kids, you have an opportunity because you are stepped aside from the, you know, I've created this song and my heart and soul is into it. You have a unique opportunity to be able to think a little bit, I would expect, more clearly than the musician in the position. And what a great opportunity for your girls to kind of watch you guys in that process, learning the business end of it, so that yeah. as they become adults and have to do that for themselves, they have uh, a little bit more of a business sense to deal with you know, the industry end of it. We're just learning with them and growing up with them, really. I feel uh, it, it's been so fun already. Uh, it, the stress is worth it, absolutely, uh, but it's tons of work. And, I mean, I'm if, if I'm not running around somebody somewhere or getting something for supper, I'm, I'm on the computer, and I already devote definitely half of my day to their stuff. So they got a lot of stuff going on behind scenes that requires a lot of, um, say, contracts or grant applications. You have to write, you know, your little book or whatever for those sorts of things. And, um, or just, you know, we're just sort of organizing, oh, okay, you have to have a band where? You know, 3,000 miles away. Okay, we got to, you know, get those new songs into an MP3 form and, and sent off with the lyrics. And, you know, just that sort of thing constantly comes up. We're always sort of scrabbling and, um, you know, just, uh, it's fun. It's good. It's all good, though. That's what makes you a momager, a manager, yeah. but not a stage mom. A stage right. mom. Right. Yay not just for the They're okay. <laughs> yes. If, and the, the job of a, a manager, parent, is scheduling, email, details, checking, make sure everything's going to be, get people where they need to be, making sure everything is the way you, they said it was going to be. That is a lot of work. It really is, and at their level already, so I can't imagine what goes on when you are uh, successful on the radio, say, so you're busy with that sort of radio tour stuff and marketing, and because we're, we're already sort of doing marketing at a, at a smaller level now, and it's, it's very time consuming. My husband, who does work full time, um, he's already devoting, I'm sure, half his day, <laughs> you know, to phone calls about whatever. He's taken on a lot of it recently, and I think he's... He's fantastic as sort of their business manager, and I'm, I'm sort of doing their personal managing. And we found this great sort of, uh, I, I think we're side by side, and, and it's just working well for us anyway right now. So hopefully thank we you, can Karen. continue. Okay. <laughs> yeah. was, I'm trying to get you done, but thank you. Thank you. It's so, it's so crucial to have the input of a parent that has a kid because a lot of people don't realize how much time, effort, work, money goes into when your kid starts getting invited to other things. Somebody's yeah. got to take care of those details. Yeah, definitely. That's All right, girls. Are you ready for the tough questions? Yes. All right. So um, I'd like to begin this section of our interview, um, Sarah, by talking to you about your personal experience. Uh, you guys were the, the face of the anti-bullying campaign, as we mentioned earlier in the interview. And and probably, I believe, right before the time that anyone really saw the, the national commercial and knew that you were the face of anti-bullying, you yourself were started being bullied really severely online. and. Um, I'd like you to speak to, kind of tell the story of what happened and really how it affected you personally and also how your view 
on bullying, I mean, we're all against it, right? We all speak out against it. You did a song, you wrote a song, you did this big campaign, you were in this commercial, but then how that perspective changes when you're the person being bullied at that level. Yeah, for sure. I think when you're an artist, especially, um, people view artists usually as um, this like person on a pedestal that's almost like an image. Like, Indestructible. Yeah, almost just like this picture is usually what they see. So uh, on the internet, and this is why cyberbullying is becoming such an issue, is someone can sit behind a computer screen and most things that they would never say, which is usually um, if they say it, for whatever reason, it's something they never say in person. So that's why cyberbullying is becoming such a more, like, more um, common, common thing because you know of social media becoming so big that it is. So once you're an artist, people almost view them as like indestructible. You can say anything, and they won't get upset because they have, you know, these success, and you know they're traveling and they're you know dressing nice or whatever. Um, but behind that, people don't realize is there's a lot of work behind it. Um, a lot of the time, you you sacrifice you know daily teenager fun things that um, most people don't really have that kind of extra stress um, of always you know expectations or whatnot. So um, people almost view artists as indestructible. So it's very easy for them to you know diss them or whatever. Um, depending on the artist, I know a lot of people tend to like to ignore that, but for other people like me, it's almost hard to ignore because you almost take it more personally and it's something you always have to work on because as an artist, you're always going to be criticized. So there was a time when I got quite a few online stuff that did affect me a lot and it still does, but I think um, it was it was really great almost in a way because when you um, are doing an anti-bullying thing, it is great when you are able to relate to it because you understand why you're doing it and you can be able to relate to the kids more and it almost puts more of a meaning towards what you're doing um, versus you know I'm not going through anything but I'm doing this anti-bullying thing just because you know I'm doing it to look good it's not like that at all when you finally understand it and appreciate the help that you could do that's what I think it's really worth it so in the end it was a I, I took it more as a positive experience and I think it definitely um, helped us become stronger in believing in ourselves and it definitely helped us be able to um, you know relate and reach out to more kids and really love what we did with the video and I admire I admire you both for one of the things that I admire most about you is that way before any of these great opportunities came along for you to do these things these big places with big names you were singing in like the public schools you'd go and do that thing and and I watched your personality change to that really bad the worst part of the bullying thing which was really sad but the fact that you I mean it things hurt and they hurt deeply even if you're a happy person you're the one out talking it still hurts really really deeply it really affects you but you guys still at the level you're at you still go out and you still sing in schools and you still let kids know um, your your own personal experiences and that that speaks volumes because you don't have a manager out pushing you to do good deeds and hook up with good organizations mm -hmm. you guys do it because you really care yeah mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing too is when someone gets like a couple of people that say you know negative things about them mostly because maybe they want to do the same thing or you know, sometimes that's what that's why they say those kind of things. But I think it's really important to realize just because you have X amount of people saying certain things about you, there's always going to be someone saying that kind of thing. But at the same time, you have a double X amount of people that are really supportive, like your family or your friends or people that really care about you. So I think that's always a good thing as you, you know, are doing music. There's like the struggles behind it, but you always you're always going to have those those people that really care about you and i think that's always a good thing to remember as you're always going to have you know those people that are trying to get you down and those are never going to go away no matter what level of success you're at whether you're a beginner piano player or you're like up to the Taylor Swift Justin Bieber level there's always going to be someone trying to hate on you right Justin's all playing piano now i didn't know yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, speaking so. of piano, guys, I want you to do a quick fire here, okay? So you're going to go back and forth. Each of you name an instrument you play and how many years you've been playing it. So you, one, you, one, sure. one, one, go. Okay. I play piano and I've been playing since I was about six or seven. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did classical piano. 
I do that too. Yeah. I just didn't say classical. Um, and I've done that <laughs> since I was five or six, I think. Same. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I play guitar, and I've been playing since I was about like twelve, I think. I play guitar, and I was playing since I was about eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I play. I just started learning harp, and I've only been playing like a year, but it's getting there. <laughs> um, I play mandolin, and I started that before guitar, so when I was around ten or eleven. Do you have any more? No, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've played a little bit of bass, which I really like. I actually played bass in church, so that was fun. Um, and yeah, so let me think. Is that it? I've done a little bit of. You could lie and say you play the bag. I could, I play the bag. Banjo. Oh, I played banjo. I learned a couple of songs on the banjo, so technically I can lie and say I know how to play the banjo. <laughs> well, that's not lying. If you play a couple things, you can play a couple things. Okay. <laughs> so. Now we're going to talk about vocal skills, since yeah. obviously this is what we worked on with you guys for a long, long time. And this is this is one of the fun things with you guys. Is as I mentioned before, personality-wise, Sarah is, and and even when when they started working with me, Sarah was the bigger voice, bigger personality, louder, more talkative, and and then Charlotte was a really quieter voice and quieter, shy, almost kind of personality. But in the duo, Charlotte is the lead singer and Sarah is the backup singer. So we've done quite a bit of work, artist at the artist level, of how you sing lead and how you sing backup, and yep. it has. It's an opposites for you guys because of where your personality is. So tell me what your guys' experience is with what, how you've had to change between singing lead and singing backup because now you trade off a bit. Yeah. Um, switching is, has been really interesting um, because it's such a different technique. And because I always kind of, I think I sang lead for a long time. Sarah's just been getting into it now. Um, mainly because I was writing songs. You know, I would write the song, Sarah would learn it, and then we'd go play it at the gig like the in a couple days, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of always how it went. And then uh, when Sarah started writing songs and then I had to like tone it back a bit, it was really interesting for me because it's such a different thing. It's just, you know, a lot of the time I would be overpowering Sarah, um, singing harmonies, and my harmonies would be blasting loud because <laughs> I didn't realize that, you know, how how you really have to tone it back to blend in and that's what you hear it in a lot of um, you know big recordings in famous songs you know and they when they mix it like that where they turn the harmonies down obviously and so yeah. um, one of my favorite memories too is a, the first song that I don't know if it was the first one it was the first one when I was working with you guys that Sarah wrote the song singing and I think it's in the oh, yeah. voice, voice club academy we have the first time she sang it for me in a lesson and then when you guys did it I think you recorded it later it was so cool to see her writing because Charlotte you're a fabulous songwriter and to see her taking on some of that so that was really cool yeah. too yeah it is neat how we're we're kind of learning to play both roles um, yeah. in, our, in our music I think it's really cool especially because you know right now we're really um we, we're really set in our sound and we're recording these new albums and we're finally doing that, and I think when my sister was writing songs and cranking them out like crazy, of course, like, I would just learn them and do harmony. So sometimes people mistake me as a backup singer when our main goal was to be a group. So I But you never really learned the whole <laughs> song, and so it was always kind of me anyways. Because you were doing lead guitar, yeah. so it was hard for her to focus Sarah on. can lay down some R&B stuff like crazy. So mm -hmm. Sarah, I would say, it's, I, Charlotte, I am going to talk to you too, I promise. But Sarah, this, a producer said something to you in the studio. When I heard about it, I was like really not happy uh, about um, that. And tell me what that was, something negative about you shouldn't be singing this or shouldn't be singing that because you can't oh, really do yeah. it. Casey's missing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, which one were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. There have been more than one. Tell me something. Uh, Is something. it the one where it doesn't well, matter what you been, do? There's been sometimes, um, whether it's positive or negative, of course, when you have two sisters, event, like it, it always comes a time when someone's going to pick okay. one voice over the other. I mean, of course, in a duo, you always have with so many groups. Everyone has their different favorite. Especially sisters, um, I guess. Yeah, especially sisters. You always have to, like, compare one to the other. But I think it's great because, you know, our voices are unique to each other. So we're able to um, really blend and make a unique sound. So 
I know I'm going to have you guys to... show exactly how you do that, how you uh, trade off between backup and lead, and I'm going to have you do that in a song as we close off the yeah. interview. But before we do that, um, both of you, first of all, I'm going to ask Charlotte a question because I haven't asked Charlotte much any anything. Charlotte, yeah. I, want you to, I want you to talk a little bit about um, your songwriting, where your inspiration comes oh, yeah. from, and some of the hardest lessons you've learned about you know, what's okay to write about, what's not, and how do I know right. I'm good, all of those kind of things. Talk about that real quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. I have been songwriting for a long time, since I was about probably 12. It started as poetry, and then I guess I just started writing songs. I don't know. It just became something that I love to do. It's actually, like, my favorite thing to do. And inspiration for me, it comes in a lot of different ways. Um, sometimes it'll be about, you know, a friend that I care about, um, <laughs> um or a relationship of my sister's <laughs> school, <laughs> or, or, Sarah. or a friend's um, relationship with somebody, or, you know, like, it could be something on the TV or something in a movie or a book that I've read, or a lot of times it's just a metaphor that pops into my head or a general idea. Um, What's the best songwriting advice you've gotten from everybody that you've had a chance to work with so far? Honestly, I think the best thing I've heard, and I've heard this from multiple different people, is songwrite as much as you can. Like, if you can, every day, just as much as you can, because songwriting is one of those things that, you know, people can try to teach you how to do it, but... I think the best way to get better at songwriting is to do it as much as you possibly can. Like that's literally how I've gotten so much better and I can tell when I listen to old songs how much I've improved is just because I write a lot. And I okay, think so that's tell me this. Of all the songs you write, what percentage of them do you actually finish? Lately I do finish a lot. I'm getting better at that because I'll, a lot of times I'll start songs that'll be then I'll just start another one the next day and I'll I'll forget about it because I'm so excited about the new one. But um, lately I've been going back and finding old ones that I really think are cool and finishing them, which is sometimes hard because sometimes you have a fragment and it's so hard to figure out the next part. Like, I find that is the hardest part, not not just starting a song, but like finishing it. But, yes, yeah. finishing. But, I mean, when you go through a lot of songs, sometimes you abandon something because you go, yep, that's not really going anywhere. And that sometimes right. that's okay to leave those because that was just part of your growth process. It exactly. Doesn't mean it has to be I do have a lot of those. I have a file on my computer where I keep all my songs, and I have, like, 200 songs in there, and sometimes I listen to old ones, I'm like, oh, what was that? And, you know, like, cause, <laughs> like you said, like, you start so many things, and it's a, it's a growth process, and, and you just you keep them to listen to them for fun, but you don't do anything with them, and I have a lot of those, and then I have a lot of ones that I do finish, so you kind of weed out which ones you think are the best. <laughs> so, Sarah, why did you start writing? Um... She's trying to be like Nate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I always, I always wrote songs. Like it, it usually was like instrumental stuff that um, we never really found like a right place to play it because if we were doing shows, it was usually like singing the songs that my sister wrote. Um, and then I think I started almost kind of silently writing about a year and a half ago, probably. Are you sure you didn't start writing in response to the fact that she was writing about your life and you felt the need to get back at her? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, it was just always something that I really wanted to do, but I never felt like I was poet, poetically inclined, able to yeah. do it. Um, and then I guess, like, eventually I started doing it. I was like, oh, yeah, I, this is uh, fun. I, for me, it's more I can't really um, write about... Uh, something thought up. I know a lot of people are really good with concepts and writing about different ideas, but for me, I have to actually experience it and able to get the words to come to my head. Which is kind of more fun. <laughs> Which is, yeah, yeah it's cool, because, you know, people like authenticity, and they like to know that that actually happened with anything, with movies, with, you know, songs, anything that's authentic is really cool. So I feel like for and me... A lot of people don't realize that you don't have to write the whole song. There, That's why collaboration exists. Some people are good with lyrics. Some people are good with melodies. Some people are good with putting the construction of the whole song together. You don't have to be excellent at all of them. Thing, all of those things to, yeah, definitely. To, to become a better songwriter. You just have yeah. to start writing. I yeah. think it's really, like, a really big tip for me is definitely, like, I know some people are either insecure in the writing or they think they're just really good at one thing and therefore they box themselves and decide to do more co-writing, which I feel almost um, holds them back from becoming a great songwriter that they are. Not saying co-writing is a bad thing, it's really great and you learn a lot, but I think there's really something significant about 
being able to write on your own. And as you write more songs, you're able to grow in that and become and more of a writer. Discover your own sound, I guess. Yeah, and discover your own sound. And then co-writing adds to that. But I think it's really special and important when you're able to uh, strengthen your own voice as a writer, which is really cool. I think that's a great point. You have to know what your own voice is before you can add that to a collaboration. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, each of you, I want you to give your best piece of advice to an under 18 year old singer out there someplace who thinks, I want to make money doing this. Ooh. Hmm. Um, this is difficult because you don't want it to be cliche, but I think anything cliche is almost a good, good advice, really, as silly as it sounds. You know, like um, I think trying to stay positive and not letting any um, criticism get you down. And but yet at the same time be willing to take criticism that feels constructive, you know, because there's there's a boundary between somebody trying to help you and then somebody being rude. And I think you have to know the difference between those two and allow yourself to open up in order to get better. But yet don't take crap from people because <laughs> people will, you know, be rude to you. They will. Yeah, I would add to that just as a guideline. Qualified opinions. We've we've talked about that before. Qualified opinions. If you get if you take somebody's opinion as as constructive criticism, they should have some skill, background, or something that qualifies them to know a lot more about that than right. you currently do. That would be somebody you'd want to consider taking constructive criticism from. If it's yeah. just somebody out of the blue that really doesn't know anything about anything, then just give it that amount of you know. Yeah. Points yeah, towards me. And and obviously it's how people phrase things too, you know, if they you can tell when somebody's being rude. <laughs> so I, I think that's the biggest thing for me to tell people, just like don't get down when people like seriously offend you. <laughs> because, you know, people can leave rude things, especially like with YouTube and stuff. All the time. People are nasty. So just like ignore it and keep doing your thing, you know. I think for me it's it's kinda similar. It's almost um just, it's not that don't get discouraged. I think it's good to understand that it's okay to get discouraged because it's so normal. Like, every artist, you'll see, like, a Katy Perry, for example, was in a whole different genre. She was a, uh, a Christian, um, a Christian kind, of, kind of a more indie sound. Indie. Um, and she had been with tons of labels, and, of course, you listen to that, and you're like, yeah, well, she was with the label for a couple years, and then she became an instant hit, so that's okay. But... You know, the couple years becoming um, in different labels and being let go, it becomes extremely discouraging. I feel like some people almost give up at that point because, you know, you think, what's the point? But there's been so many times that we've, um, you know, done different things where we've uh, applied for a certain contest and um, haven't done well with that. But then the next week we would apply for, let's say, the John Lennon thing that we got and then would win that, so something a bit bigger. So there's always something around the corner, and it sounds cliche to say don't give up, but it's really true because you never really know what's going to happen. And another important thing is to always be playing and gigging and just never stop that because, if anything, that's just really going to get you where you want to get. So to sum it up, would you say build your skill and build your experience? For yeah. sure. And, you know, Do as keep, much you can. keep on keeping on. <laughs> Great, and with that deep philosophical comment, uh, I want you guys to, whatever, whatever you've chosen, I asked you guys to pick something and to take turns um, singing lead and singing backup, so oh, yeah. show us what you did. Okay, well, what song do you want to do? You guys have talked about pedals, but yeah. Do, you yeah. do you both do, uh, can you both sure. lead? Yeah, yeah, we sure we can do that one. Sorry, my dog is barking or yeah. growling at me. We don't take her many places with us, not because we don't love her, but she likes to sing over top of our singing. So. Can't have competition at that level. Not in the band. <laughs> You're not a command sister. <laughs> she doesn't like that I said that. Look at she's sassing for a pet. Okay. Okay. I think she wants out. Hold on. <laughs> Gotta let the dog out first. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Here we go. We're good. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. One, Another day two, in the man family. Ripping up roses with champagne 
burning free cash you went through pain. Hoping that this happens tells me whether I should stay. Because we both can't afford to make any more mistakes. Petals are falling, falling like stardust Down from my fingers, I will keep going Until the last one falls to the floorboards Tells me the future, shows me your heart Loves me, loves me more, oh, 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 oh. On the ground, made like a mantra for the kid. Hoping that this pattern shows me which road I should take. Because we both can't afford to make any more mistakes. anything with lead though. Yeah. That was the Charlotte lead song. Dude, you could do words. Oh. I like that song. Or Sarah, what have you got that you're going to sing lead on? I have. Um, do your song. My song. I have a couple songs. How about we get uh, Daylight Dream on the Grandma Nando? Sure. And Charlotte can let Angel in. <laughs> cool, and I hadn't heard that song, Petals, now. Is that going to be on the new album? Petals? Possibly, sure. actually. Possibly, actually. The there are four <laughs> videos you guys did last time you stopped by my place. You guys yeah. sang four songs that are going to be on the album. I'm trying to remember the um, rodeo I made fun of. Okay. Um, in, a, in a good way, in a happy way. Uh, and uh, oh, Dang, I they can't have, remember the rest of left Because Sarah went to get the mando and the computer's going to die. So let's run to grab the... We didn't realize that... Um, you know, it's all my tabs that are open, so I apologize. Sure. For that. 
yourself. That's all right. I'll tell everybody where they can find everything until they come back. Okay. Um, so if, if anybody wants to check out the four songs, I did put up the videos with permission of uh, the unplugged set they did at, at my place last time they, they stopped by. Um, and you'll find that at thevoiceclub.com slash commands with an S, C-O-M-M-A-N-D-S. So you'll see that there. I also put up a special, I, we get asked a lot, you know, I want to learn all the stuff that you taught the commands. A lot of that is in our, our special online video training program. It's called the Voice Club Academy. So I put a link to that too, so you guys can check that out. I know we have a lot of command fans that constantly ask me that. So all that stuff, you can either work in the artist training program, which right now is closed uh, for new people, or go to... Uh, thevoiceclub.com slash commands and there'll be a link with a special a uh, little special I put together for fans of the commands fans of the commands it has an S ring to it alright girls <laughs> are you ready for the Sarah song yay just making sure I'm in tune <laughs> the nice thing about the voice is you don't have to tune it yeah that is a good thing this is a song that I wrote and yeah Play it. Yeah, play okay. it. Sarah. It's called Daylight Dreaming. <laughs> guys. Thank you guys so much for joining um, us for the interview, our special interview with the Command Sisters and the Command Sisters parent, one of two. Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> 
Uh, everybody can go to thevoiceclub.com slash commands, C-O-M-M-A-N-D-S, and you'll see the four uh, one man band, which was a really great. I loved all of these. I had not heard any of these from the new project Rodeo, which was cool. I miss you, which is a great ballad, and and my favorite funny song. Why do you have to get so good looking? Which I thought was hilarious. That's still going on the album, right? Maybe Possibly. <laughs> one day. You know. And for the for the members of the academy, the Voice Club Academy, we have video in there of Sarah in her lesson when she first wrote singing, and then when you guys recorded it, and we got we got a bunch of other things. It, there's all sorts of behind the scenes me me working with the commands. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just so everybody else knows, every singer's got issues, and we we always work on them out. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just flew in front of the camera. Uh, sure, uh, Renee just put Sarah's bracelet. He just walked Renee, in. Renee, peek, peek your head in there now that you're home and say, hey, I'm a dad and I work so these guys hi. can do this. Say hi. Go around and say hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm the guy that pays the bills. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, thank you so much for having us. It's been really great. Yeah, well, again, thank you guys. Thanks uh, for joining us away from the Netherlands of Canada to yeah. our U.S. audience and, and abroad. And um, everybody can go check all that stuff out. Like I said, thevoiceclub.com slash commands. And uh, we'll see everybody in our next Hangout interview. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.